On this episode of Big Guy Builds, we give you a tour of our workspace before giving it a makeover. Let's get started. What's up everybody? I'm John Hobbs. Welcome to Big Guy Builds. If this is your first time with us, we're glad you found us. If you're a repeat offender, welcome back. Workspace is one of the key ingredients to furniture making. In fact, we consider it to be one of the main legs of the conjoined triangles of woodworking success. We're big advocates of using whatever space you have available. Your driveway, a corner of the basement, your side yard. Heck, if you're outdoors, all the world's a workshop, right? However, if you're a busy family like we are, then we need to maximize the value of our shop time by spending less time setting up and tearing down temporary workspaces and more time actually building furniture. A large dedicated space is ideal, but for most of us, that's not an attainable luxury. The best we can do is to make the most of our shared spaces. We're about to embark on a makeover of our garage so we have a more efficient workspace for making furniture. We're starting with a fairly typical suburban American two car attached garage. It's about 20 feet by 24 feet. And the ceiling is nice and high at a little over nine feet tall. We do enjoy parking our vehicles indoors, especially here in the Midwest where the weather can sometimes be a little sketchy. So most of our tools and fixtures will be mobile. That'll make it easier to switch for, from garage mode to workshop mode and back again. Our overall strategy will be arrange things in the workflow that we use when we're doing a typical project. This will minimize the amount of time that we spend moving tools and materials around. So without further ado, let's start the tour. We're going to start in this corner of the garage. This area will be used for lumber storage as it is now, and for breaking down material to rough dimensions at the beginning of a project. Although I love the convenience of storing my lumber vertically, it takes up a lot of wall space. If we go to the more traditional horizontal configuration and move the lumber up to the top half of the wall, we can use the lower half for a workbench. We plan to have our miter saw on this workbench. It won't be a full-blown, built-to-the-nines chop saw station that you've probably seen on other YouTube channels. Instead, we're going for a more minimalist approach that's gaining popularity. We'll clamp the saw to the workbench, then clamp outriggers to the bench that will support long material and provide stops for repeated cuts. It'll be quick and easy to unclamp and stow everything if we need the workbench space for other purposes. Making your spaces versatile has huge benefits when you have a limited amount of space. When the weather permits, it'll be easy to expand this area to the right and onto the driveway if necessary, as we've done in the past. Scanning left, we see some sheet goods leaning against the wall. This location and orientation seems to be working well, so we're going to go with it. We'll build a cart slash caddy to kind of corral and organize the sheet goods and make it easier to leaf through the boards. There should be enough space between the workbench and the sheet goods storage to stash a thickness planer. We'll build a rolling cabinet upon which to mount it so it's easily moved around and create more storage. The open area in front of the chop saw, workbench, and the sheet goods storage is where we'll set up large machines such as the joiner, planer, table saw, etc. when milling the lumber to final dimensions. Moving further left into the back corner of the garage, you can see a service entrance back here. In the four plus years we've lived here, we've never ever used that door, so it's pretty much just a waste of wall space. This corner will be where we park the other large machines when they're not being used. We'll remove the shelving above the cabinets and repurpose them elsewhere in the garage. Then we'll move these cabinets up higher on the wall, creating more floor space for a table saw, a jointer, etc. This area will also be where we park our dust collector. This large two-drawer cabinet on wheels will be repurposed in a different part of the house once we have new workbenches and cabinets built and installed here in the garage. On top of that cabinet, you can see a large portion of our hardware collection. We're not entirely sure how we're going to organize and store our hardware at this point. Possibly wall organizers or perhaps a purpose-built cabinet inside one of our workbenches. Moving left again along the back wall of the garage, you can see that the wall is bumped out a bit. Our laundry closet and pantry are on the other side of that wall in the bump out. We plan to put another workbench along this bumped out part of the wall. It will be on wheels so it can be moved around the garage if necessary. Perhaps even moved back to back with the first workbench to make a large 8 foot by 4 foot work surface. It'll also have plenty of storage. The wall above the workbench will be clad in plywood. This will make it easy to install any tool holders, organizers, caddies, and etc. We prefer simple construction grade plywood over options like pegboard, slat wall, or French cleats. It's the least expensive, requires the least amount of labor to install, and is the most flexible. 
Other portions of our walls that aren't covered in cabinets, shelves, or lumber storage will also be clad in three quarter inch plywood. With nine foot ceilings here, there will probably be enough room to include a shelf or two at the top of the wall. We'll probably also mount our pancake air compressor high on this wall as well. This back bench here is where we'll continue processing parts that have been milled to final dimension. Shaping edges, cutting joinery, adding curves and tapers, drilling pocket holes, any hand tool work, all the tasks that typically happen between milling and assembly. We expect things like a drill press and bandsaw to live in this general area as well. Continuing around to the other side of the garage, this is where my wife's vehicle lives, so we'll keep this half pretty clean. We plan on building a collapsible, stowable work table and mount it to the wall here. It's a simple yet genius design we've seen appear on social media recently. It'll give us a four foot by eight foot workspace when deployed, but take up very little shop space when stowed. It'll also be on casters, so it'll be very versatile. It can be used for breaking down sheet goods, as an outfeed table for the table saw, as an assembly table, just about anything. We can even roll it out under the driveway or anywhere else in the shop we need it. We expect to use this area for glue ups, assembly, and finish. The stowable table will be really handy for that. We also hope to stash our clamps in this area where you see the mops and brooms hanging. This is also an area where we may repurpose the wire shelving for additional storage. So there's the master plan for making our two car garage do double duty. Workflow should be nice and efficient with projects moving counterclockwise through the space as the build progresses. Now we will be filming many of the individual projects as we go. So you want to make sure that you are subscribed and have notifications turned on so you don't miss any of the fun. So for Big Guy Builds, my name is John Hobbs and we'll see you next time.